Right, so we're going to make a start on the, the top of the head here. Um, and I'm just going to go through the colours a little bit in a little bit more um, detail. Um, you know, we've kind of got this this colour, which is it's a bit of a tricky one because it's it's orange with black in it. And when you bring black into orange, a lot of the time you can get green. So you've got to be really, really careful. And when we look at the top of this lovely head here, we've got some um, some areas where they're a little bit pinky. Um, they're a little bit darker, but for me, the best way to start thinking about colour and to start thinking about the layering and what colours I'm going to use and how I'm going to do it is to look for, uh, in mo most cases, it's the lightest colour. So in this particular one, we've got this sort of orangey colour, which I'm, uh, I'm using the terracotta, the polychromos terracotta in there. Um, I see that as almost like the base and we're just kind of going to do the top part of the head here. Um, it's almost the base uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to bring the darker colours in there and bring a little bit of the lighter colours in as well which might sound a little bit strange because if we're going to go lighter than the terracotta why wouldn't we do that first but what I can do is I can temper my pressure as I'm bringing some of that uh, texture and everything in so that the lighter colours then we can put a little bit of pink over the top of it or something like that. So my thinking is I'm going to use the terracotta to begin with. I'm going to use definitely a little bit of uh, the Caput Morton Violet again in the Polychromos range and then I found that this has been fantastic. This is the Luminance Dark Flesh. Really really fabulous because you can bring it in as quite a a lightish sort of it's almost like Caput Morton Violet but it doesn't have the vibrancy to it if that makes sense it, it kind of just is a little bit duller uh, but quite dark and you can use it either light or you can kind of use it with quite a bit of pressure um, I'm also going to use the uh, the black and we're going to be using the if I can find it where are you here we go the drawing black the drawing ivory black now this is pretty much a saviour uh, I think that particularly on drafting film you don't have to use a lot of pressure and do you know what it's absolutely fantastic it's a really 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 super um, very opaque very soft it's got great coverage and I found on the rest of the piece and I've been working on the rest of the piece it's worked really 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 nicely um, and then I might bring in something like a bit of cinnamon in places the top of the head in here maybe a little smidge of something in there a little smidge of something in there um, and just using sort of like a, a base of colors I might even bring in something like uh, maybe like a burnt sienna I can't find my burnt sienna where is it oh there it is nope, that's not it there it is a little bit of burnt sienna I tend to find the burnt siennas maybe go a little bit on that sort of greeny side uh, so we've got to be got to be a little bit careful but there's definitely areas where we can bring a little bit of that in we don't need to go crazy and put every single color under the sun in there oh gosh I can see purple oh, gosh I can see pink oh gosh I can see blue um you, well you can if you want but I tend to stick to sort of like a, a range of, of basic colors um, and then potentially kind of when we get to around here on the top of the oranges, I'll bring in something like um, something like a sepia 50 in over the top of the orange. Now, I the opposite of orange or the opposite on the colour wheel um, for orange is is blue. Um, and they look great together. Blue and orange look fantastic because they're complementary colours. Mix them up. You put, start putting blue into the orange. What does blue, well, orange, what does blue and yellow make? Blue and yellow makes green. So you've got to really understand your colour theory and how you mix colours. Um, I would not suggest using a blue in an orange to create the shadows. I would suggest using a, a purple or a green, which are the split complementary and the triadic colours. I much prefer to do that because then I don't have that risk of it going green. And you might be saying, well, hang on a second, you've just said we're going to be putting green in the orange but when you mix green and orange it doesn't make green you get sort of like a nice sort of dark it's like putting um uh you know purple and yellow together it it, it they mix really well and they're fine but blue and orange you are definitely going to get that sludgy green so just be aware of that um so i'm going to start with the terracotta 
Um, it's not particularly sharp. It's got a bit of a nice soft edge on it there, which I quite like. Um, I've got my outline underneath so I can, I can push the outline away if I want. And what we're going to have to do, um, and is really imperative for realism, is making sure that our, our fur direction goes the right way. Um, and the right way is the way that it follows on the, on the animal that you're drawing. So I'm just going to start in here. And it's just going to be very, very gentle to begin with. Really nice light pressure. I might actually sharpen this because I've got a bit of a hard bit on the end. Um, and for anybody wondering what pencil sharpener I've got, I use the Swordfish Multipoint. I used to swear by the, the crank pencil sharpeners. And now that I've become incredibly lazy, I, um, I like to use electric ones because you literally just lean over put your pencil in and it's sharp and oh honestly it's just the best thing in the whole world so I'm just going to come down here you can see I'm using really really lovely light pressure trying to get a um, a nice even lay down of the pencil doesn't matter if it's not overly even because we're obviously going to be layering over the top of it what I am doing is I'm taking note of the texture that's coming through from the hair. This bit's gonna be a little bit tricky because we've got to put our hand on an angle. So if you've got a uh, an easel that sort of swizzes round, that can make life an awful lot easier. Um, we're just gonna come round here, looking at our reference photo. There are lines in here that, to be honest, made sense when I, you know, when I created them and now they don't really serve any purpose at all. Um, so I'm just sort of ignoring them a little bit. Just putting those in there. Just nice and gently. And I'm trying to bring a little bit of that texture in as I uh, as I come round. And we've got a little bit of a curve in there as well. So we're thinking the head kind of comes over and around. So we want to bring that little bit of a curve in into there. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit and then we'll... Um, Dogs. What are you doing, Vincent? Vinny. Oh, he's. Yeah, I tell you what he's doing. He's um, he he's got a little bit of a cut on his knee. Vinny. And he and as soon as it um, scabs open, he starts licking it. All scabs over, he starts licking it. Pest. You're a pest, Vincent. Okay, so you can see I'm just going nice and gently in here. Nice and gently. I have to shut that door because I can hear the, the washer. I've had the washing machine and the dryer literally going all day. And it's one of those days, you know, when I'm washing my, washing my bedding and um, nothing's dry yet. So I, I guess at midnight I'll be making my bed. <laughs> That's a usual habit of mine. Um, okay, so I'm just coming around here. Can you see how we're just coming around a little bit and the uh, the hair director is just moving around. You just need to find that nice um, sweet, sweet spot on the end of my pencil there. You'll you'll see me moving my pencil around a lot when I'm kind of trying to find the, the, the sharp, uh, sharpest area on the end. But when I'm doing something like this, I try and keep it completely static because I get this sweet spot on the end and then I can keep the consistent pressure and the consistent texture coming through and it um, you know it's much much better to work that way okay so I've got that in there so the next thing I'm going to use um, is my dark flesh luminance dark flesh I'm just going to sharpen this one as well When I sharpen my pencils, when I bring them out of the sharpener, I always run my fingers over the top of them just to kind of get rid of any residue or anything like that. You don't want it to come out onto the paper. And then I'm going to come into here and I'm just going to start to bring in a, a darker layer, particularly in this area here. Um, so we're just going to bring a, a darker layer of that dark flesh in. Again, we're just really watching the um, really watching the direction of the fur coming through here. Just nice and gently to get a bit of a feel for the uh, luminance because they feel very different to the polychromos 
I think uh, I think many people think that you know the coloured pencils are they're all the same and they really aren't. That each manufacturer and actually pencils within the same brand can feel very 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 different depending on the um, you know depending on the pigment. So um, it's it's it, it, sometimes it takes a little while to kind of go right okay this is this is what we're doing now and to get your hand to actually do what you want it to do. So just coming in over the top of the orange there. You can see it's dulling it down and also the orange isn't particularly strong whereas in our picture there is quite a strong orange in there. Uh, and we're going to bring another layer in of the orange just to uh, brighten that up a little bit. So this has got a real scratchy bit on it I have to say. Hold on a sec. Just roughen it up a bit. That's better. Let's just get rid of that little bit there. So um, here she is all finished. If you would like to learn how to do the whole piece, uh, rather than just the little colour recipe I shared with you, then you can find her on um, on my Patreon or indeed you can join me in the Academy uh, from the 18th of April um, where her full tutorial is there, ready and waiting for you to get stuck in.